Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start the memorial off with something that my mom always really enjoyed. And I don't know, some of you may know that this ugly old guy with the long hair has a purpose. I actually sing songs and tell stories at dude ranches in Bandera. And I went to, Cal to Arizona to visit mom many, many times. When I went there, I went dressed just the way I am today. Sometimes she was a little bit uh, like my wife. Well, maybe I ought to put that hair in a ponytail or something. But one of her favorite things that I sang, and I sang at her whole place out there for their whole group several times. But one of the songs that she always enjoyed, I'm going to sing for you now. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. She was born on the eastern rolling hill plains of Colorado <coughs> to a family of eight, six boys, two girls. She was number nine. Her siblings covered the age spectrum with a sister 24 years older and a brother 21 and a younger sister still to come. Her parents started in a dugout home, then a sod house. When she arrived, her home was a stately two-story concrete structure, 40 foot square, built by her father, some say with 26 bags of concrete. This was a hard working family that pulled together to wreak a living of it from their arid 3,000 acre homestead. She was still just a baby when their parents moved to Nebraska. And the ranch was turned over to her older, oldest sister and her husband. The ranch was later turned over to a younger brother and the eldest sister and family oh, moved yeah, to I'm town. In Nebraska, they lived on a, a, in a big house on a farm that had fertile grass and freshwater springs. She went to school in a one-room farm school near the farm. Later, she went to town. When she graduated from high school, she married her high school sweetheart. They worked together in many, many businesses. They started off plumbing, movie theater. Thank you, nephew. After the movie theater, they had motels in Colorado. They had a potato chip factory, hardware stores, gravel pits, and a construction company. They had three sons, and, and they lived in Nebraska, Colorado, California, and then back to Nebraska where all three of her sons graduated from the same high school she had. She divorced and moved to Colorado, where she met a gentleman and married again. She gained three more children and melded their two families together and ultimately had 15 grandchildren. She and her new husband had an exciting life living in Colorado, California, and Arizona. They traveled a lot by car, travel trailer. They even took a freighter through the Panama Canal. She had a great life. Always the best part of her life was her children, her grandchildren, and her great-grandchildren. She loved best all the babies, and she raised them well. And we are here today to give testimony to that. Thank you. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now am found, was 
was blind, but I now I see. <coughs> We're here to celebrate the life of Myrna Lewis. Brandy real well. Born Myrna Corliss. She was a daughter, sister, and aunt. As Myrna Wright, her family grew and she became mother and grandmother. As Myrna Mack, her love of family was lived out as it grew wider and wider. She loved being a mother, grandmother, great-grandmother, and great-great-grandmother. We are all thankful for her well-lived life and all the people whose lives she touched. Relieved of pain and suffering, may she rest in peace. I'd like to open it up to anybody that would like to share some memories. Um, Mary Beth. Mary Beth's next. I'm Marianne's daughter-in-law, Mary Beth. And I want to tell you about the last 40 years that I... Mary Beth, closer. The pleasure I had to have Myrna in my life. Myrna loved her family, and I believe much of her joy came from her love for her children and their families. Of course, in the whole scheme of things, I came to, into her long life rather late, just 40 years ago this year, so I can really only speak of those. I love Myrna like a mother. She readily accepted me as the second wife and always wanted to know all the news about the kids. After my mom died 10 years ago, her role became a reality to me. I always asked Myrna to be with me when I brought my babies home from the hospital. For some reason, she had a calming effect on me and that benefited me and the boys and how she loved the babies. Her experienced hands bathed my first and she shared her knowledge with me. She helped me through breastfeeding and all those worrisome things that come up with newborns. And even with this, she and my own mother were fast friends throughout the years. And Christmases were always special in Texas because Grandma Mac was coming. Her suitcase was always stuffed with handmade presents wrapped in paper and crumbling cookies that she knew the boys would love. We were always treated to her homemade cinnamon rolls for Christmas morning. She always told me she loved to be with little children on Christmas. Don and I would always wrap lots of small trinkets for her and put under the tree because she just liked to unwrap presents. And quite frankly, she seemed a little disappointed when she got to the last one. David and Daniel adored their grandma and have nothing but fond and loving memories of her. She showered them with love and encouragement and she taught them patience and kindness by example. I also admired Myrna for insisting that her boys keep in touch at very regular intervals. I would secretly listen as Don would sit out on the patio and go on and on on the phone. It made my heart happy. I can only pray that my boys and I will share these moments. They did have a strange relationship that I had to learn to accept and that they loved to argue with each other. And they had fun doing it. And we did a little traveling with Myrna, a little gambling, a little drinking with Mom. She relished in all of it. Our favorite stories, we, we took her to Mexico, and she enjoyed a margarita while strolling the shops and said, why, Donnie, this is just like being in a foreign country. <laughs> <laughs> and she loved the sands of South Padre Island. It was one of her other favorite spots in Texas. What a wonderful life to celebrate. What a legacy to <clears throat> leave. I'm sorry she was unable to enjoy favorable health to the end and being a lifelong caregiver for several family members, I, I want to thank her stepdaughter-in-law for, for the loving care that she gave to Myrna. I know she made lots of sacrifices as all of us were busy with our families here. My mother-in-law was a very special woman. She not only raised the man I love, but helped me raise my family. And it, and as a faithful woman, I know she heard Jesus as he said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. 
I am going to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. And I know Myrna is in that heavenly place now, and she's surrounded by her family that has gone before. In the fourth century, John Chrysostom, a leader of the early Christian church, wrote this. She whom we love and lose is no longer where she was before. She is now wherever we are. Does anyone else have some memories they'd like to share? I've got a card I'd like to read. Um, Lois wrote this memory. I always remember that it was always a special treat to have Aunt Myrna, her sister Mary, and Pauline come for the reunion. They were always dressed so pretty, and everyone loved having them. They just made the picnic extra special. You want to talk? You've got a story, don't you? Bert's got a story to tell. Well, thank you. I'll tell you what, uh, we've had uh, we've had many good aunts, uh, all of uh, my dad's sisters and the brothers and all. Great family. Now, I'll tell you what, Arnell and I used to, uh, when he got done, he'd get done, we didn't have a short check or something. Well, we had time when he'd go back down south and uh, meet Aunt Myrna. And get over here, Arnella. You're <laughs> part of this, too. But I'll tell you what, we never in our life met anybody as fine as, as Aunt Myrna. And what a, what a cut up, what a wonderful person she was. Well, she take me to some of their meetings with them in their, in their house there and stand up and she'd brag on me to where I got to feel not Peter pretty good. <laughs> but she was really uh, high class and uh, every time we had a chance we went down to see her. But uh, when we got there we got Royal treatment, high class, and, that, and I'll tell you, I was very, very proud of her and her religion and everything. So I think we got to feel real fortunate, and that come back through from Grandpa and Grandma Corliss because they was they was very close to their church and everything, and it fit right on through Aunt Myrna. But we was so proud of her. Or none that you want to say anything. Well, she was, uh, she treated Arnella just like she did me. Yeah. Tell him something. Okay. Even if it's wrong. <laughs> well, it's not wrong. Okay. <laughs> Myrna was, was very special to me. She treated me just like family. But I swear, every time we went down there, she moved twice. She would plan it so that we were there to help her move. <laughs> and, and that was all right. She made me arrange her kitchen, and we got along just beautifully. But it was it was always so nice to be there and see her. We had such a good time. Fond memories. Now, the only thing I could say really come from the bottom of my heart is, that her religion was very, very good, and we thank God that she was uh, uh, as fine a lady as she was, and uh, that made our trip every time, wasn't it? We went down several times, and, and uh, Many times. we was there even when about the time she moved, too. But I'll guarantee you what. You talk about a fine lady and well entertained and everything we was and so we wanna we wanna close with uh, thanking. She 
always had all these honeydew jobs for Bert to do when he got there. <laughs> Yeah, but I'll tell you what, there's one thing about her. She was smart enough to stand there and brag on me. She told me a lot of nice things. I thought I wasn't that good. So anyway, but we were very happy, very proud of her. And anytime we was out in public, anytime we seen any of her friends, she was highly, highly thought of. And they, they was very fond of her. I, and that was me. I think I'm going to turn it back over to you, Don. Thank you much. Here you, here you go. Um, just as a memory, I was thinking about our son's first birthday party, and it was at Grandma Max, and it was a wild one. I mean, the ladies were passing him around there at um, the apartment complex she lived at, and it was just great. And one of the things that I thought of just this morning, driving up in Sun City, if you're on time, you're late. And <laughs> at 12.01, I'm pulling up, and my dad's calling me up, wondering where I am. So I thought of Grandma Mac for this one. <laughs> We're going to close. Um, I have some. Oh, please, that's great. I didn't write anything down. It's just off of the top of my head. But um, we, too, went to visit Aunt Myrna on several occasions. Uh, the last time I wasn't, sure she knew who we were until just as we were conversing she said I said something about Belvedere and she just popped up with well Pauline lived in Belvedere all of her life and so I knew that she did know who we were but the funny thing I think and I can remember Aunt Luella too Aunt Luella, Aunt Myrna, Aunt Mary and Mom all had a real cute giggle. I can remember Aunt Luella giggling that little cute giggle, but the best one was, I think Myrna and Mary had driven, it was to this occasion, they had driven from Arizona, I think. Mary and Myrna were driving, well, they were driving too, back to Nebraska. They were all going to be at their mom's house that night. And, um, we got there first, but they should have been there before we got there, and then here they come driving up. And uh, they were in Myrna's Cadillac, and they came in, and they were just both giggling, so they could not get over. They had uh, trouble with the lights as they were coming, and somebody, uh, Aunt Mary kept oh, saying, well, you there. need to turn the lights on. Said, oh, they'll they'll come on by themselves. Well, then it got darker and darker, <laughs> and the lights didn't come on by themselves. So then some car came up and offered to help them, and he drove in front of them. They followed him into <laughs> some town, and then he got out and walked over to the car and pulled the switch on. <laughs> <laughs> and they just giggled and giggled when they told that. But one of their things was, now don't you tell my kids, or they won't want me driving. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 And so that, I can just still see Aunt Mary and both of them yeah. just sitting there and their whole body shakes and they just were shaking. <laughs> and the rest of the story, they, they, had fought, or they had followed us back into Nebraska and we went we got as far as Alma on 136 and I stopped and made sure they was okay and uh, tried to be, uh, you know and told them where to go and all this and then later they run into that problem and they Myrna was always she was a little bit peeved at me because she thought I was babying them too much. And then they run into that problem and everything. A few times she brought that up. <laughs> yeah. Does anybody else have some memories they'd like to share? She was a grand lady, that's all I She was a very grand lady. Yeah, we uh, visited that murder uh, several times there. And, uh, in Arizona, one time we was at the uh, one time we was at the uh, uh, Sun City, and 
we went in there, and uh, of course I had my cowboy hat on. And she she informed everybody that I was a cowboy, and I was a real deal. I was a cowboy. <laughs> and then, then one other time we visited her in the hospital. She was about ready to move to another room, and she told him that uh, she had some company, and they said, well, who was it? And she said, I don't know who he was or who they was, but I know he was a chorus. <laughs> and I thought maybe she was just a dreaming about it, but, uh, but uh, she really did know who he was. Well, this one was pretty funny. Uh, Charlie and Ruth Wills was celebrating their 50th wedding anniversary at the same time that Herb and Eunice Hazenauer was celebrating theirs that same year. So when we went down to <coughs> Arizona, we went to see Aunt Myrna, and Charlie and Ruth wanted to take Herman Eunice and Aunt Myrna and um, Clinton and I and a, a brother-in-law and a sister-in-law of mine. And we went, so we went out to eat at this restaurant. And Charlie Wills, he wanted the, what? Johnny. Johnny. Or Johnny Wills, yeah. <laughs> Johnny Wills wanted to uh, have the spatial. And it was a sandwich and I don't know what all. But by the time Charlie, uh, Johnny Wills got done ordering, he didn't have anything that was the spatial. And Aunt Bernard, he just kept the, the waitress had to keep coming back and he'd change his mind. And Aunt Myrna would sit this way, and then she'd sit this way, and we got to laughing so hard. <laughs> but anyway, Johnny Wills, he didn't have anything that he ordered on the special. <laughs> Well, I wanted to uh, let you to fill you in on this, uh, but one time Aunt Myrna went out and come out and stayed with uh, the, uh, the Hitchcocks, I guess it was, down there on the old home ranch, and she was about 15, 16 years old. Anyway, she was there, and uh, she told him, she said, I have never seen a rattlesnake. Everybody kept saying, well, watch out for a rattlesnake. She said, well, I've never seen one. So... Uh, the Mark J was out there, that's a neighbor, and he killed a rattlesnake that afternoon, so he comes to town and comes to the house there, and he told him, he said, I killed a rattlesnake out there, if you want to see a rattlesnake, wait, come out there and take a look at it. So she went out and saddled her old bronc and got on him and rode him out there to uh, where the rattlesnake was and seen that, and, and, and I remember she told about that. Yes, she had seen a rattlesnake and Mark J had sold it to her, so that's it. I can say something about the rattlesnakes. Back in, uh, I was probably about five, in the back of the Rambler, I was laying in the back, she took us up to the drive-in movie, and she saw rattlesnakes because we saw Trip Grit. And that was probably the scariest movie I ever remember seeing at that age. And I ended up sleeping in the back. <laughs> so she saw rattlesnakes. That's what that means. Just want to make sure everybody's had a chance to say whatever they'd like to. I'm in a close to prayer, and then John's going to take us out with a song. Father of all, we pray to you for those we love that see no longer. Grant them your peace. Let light perpetual shine upon Myrna. And in your loving wisdom and almighty power, work in them the good purpose of your perfect will. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And you're back with me again. I got word from Norma that mom was doing very poorly. I was in Texas and I talked with the hospice nurse and she said, if you want to see your mom, you need to get out of here. <clears throat> so I got on a plane on Wednesday and flew to Arizona and 
mom was semi was unconscious, and I stayed there most of the evening Wednesday night. I went back and I met with the hospice lady, and I read her a poem that I had written in the occasion of Mary Beth's birthday. It's more about me and our place than anything else, but I read it to this hospice lady. So Thursday morning, the hospice nurse was there, and this social worker says, well, read her the poem. We're in the room, and Mom is there, still unconscious. The hospice nurse is with her, and the hospice social worker is sitting there. And I read her this poem. The morning sun peeks through the tall oak trees. The crisp, cool, dry breeze blows through my shop. This is about as close to heaven as I've ever been. The view of the rolling hills, blue sky, and white clouds. The content horses graze in the lush, dew-covered pasture. This is about as close to heaven as I've ever been. The kids and grandkids are coming for Mom's birthday. And I'm making sawdust on another special project in my shop. This is about as close to heaven as I've ever been. The dream barn that's been on the drawing table for years is now taking shape. And my loyal dog companion lays content at my feet. This is about as close to heaven as I've ever been. And my loving wife of 40 years is still the young kid I married and still so sweet. The Lord must really love me for all the blessings he's given me. This is about as close to heaven as I've ever been. When I finished the poem, the hospice nurse said she died. See that? See, see the last uh, the grandpa's? She's the last of grandpa's bunch. She is the last of the ten of the Corvus kids. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever. Amen. 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 Just wanted to make sure everyone knew about the register book. We'd be happy to for anyone to sign it if you haven't already. There's also some calendars for next year and um, service folders uh, just memorializing Grandma Max's life. Thank you.